My name is Kevin Adams. I am a technical instructor for the United States Army, and I'm a part-time bladesmith. My grandfather and my father worked in the same steel mill together, so their influence enabled me to be able to pick up the trade fairly quickly. My name is Eric Fontaine, and I have been bladesmithing now for almost 10 years. I stay with it because it's a comfort place for me. And just being able to create something, it's a really cool experience. Well, Kevin, Eric, congratulations. You guys are both moving forward into round three of our competition, where we will be sending you home to work on an iconic weapon from history. And that weapon is the serrated Tega sword. Lord have mercy. Originating in India in the 18th century, this intimidating curved sword was known to be a great executioner. Its unique design features a nearly three foot long blade with a split tip and serrated edges that could easily behead a man. Its two pronged tip is a powerful symbol throughout the Islamic world and is inspired by the legendary sword Zalfikar, which is believed to be descended from the prophet Muhammad. You guys have a lot of parameters to follow, so pay attention. You guys need to make a blade that is between 24 and 26 inches. That curve depth needs to be no less than three and a half inches. You need to have a split at the tip that goes down between 10 and 11 inches, followed by a puncture hole at the end of that split. The curved edge and the back edge of the split need to be serrated and sharpened. Now you guys need to have a conda style hilt with a tailed pommel I have never seen anything like this in my life. It's got these crazy curves, it's serrated everywhere. It just combines so many different skill sets. It's gonna be a challenge to create. You have four days at your home forges. We'll see you then. Good luck. Good luck to you as well. <laughs> I'm back in my home forge and I'm ready to start working on this serrated taga. The length and the curvature of the blade is something I've never had to deal with before. Start getting my blade forged to shape. Looks like a hockey stick. So now I gotta shape the tip. That's concerning for me because the only thing I have to cut metal with is a grinder. You don't have a lot of control. Not pretty, but it's a start. Getting ready to quench the blade. Yeah, she's hard. The heat treat went good. It's a lot of work to do yet, but is a good start. Plan for today is make that cut from the hole to the tip. This is a butt puckering moment for me. If this doesn't work, I'm in deep trouble. Oh man, that is way too thin up there. What can you do? Now, my biggest challenge is the handle and guard. There's a lot of moving parts with it. Even though it's a lot of hard work and there's frustration, I had fun, that's why we do this craft. going to be back here in my own domain. I'm going to be building a serrated Tega sword. I've never done anything even remotely close to it, so it's going to be an exciting build. I got the rough shape on my tip. I'm going to take it over to the vise, and I'm going to start splitting it down the middle. While my steel is heating, I might as well be doing something else. This is going to be the guard. I grab the metal that I'm going to be using for my pommel and the guard. I start forging those into the proper dimensions. Right now, I feel like I'm in pretty good shape. Time to quench. It's actually not bad. It's time to assemble this thing. There we go. That's more better, less worse. Now that I have a finished blade, I have a piece of roast beef. That is a nice clean cut right there. Bladesmiths, welcome to the keel test. Let's find out what kind of lethal damage your serrated Tega will do. Kevin, you're up first. You ready? Ready as I'll ever be. Let's do this. As Doug is getting ready to do the kill test, I can feel my heart rate is increasing. Is there a flaw in there anywhere? Did I heat treat correct? So I'm feeling not that confident. Kevin, let's talk about your serrated Tega here. First up, the serrations you have here are indeed very sharp. You can feel every cut. Now, your handle construction is smooth. A little bit on the wider side than this handle, but it was an issue in controlling your weapon. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will kill. All right, Eric, ready to take a look? I'm ready, let's do it. 
All right. Kevin's blade performed absolutely phenomenal. I mean, he cut the dummy's head off. I've got to perform at least at that level to even have a chance at winning this thing. All right, Eric, the serrations on your sword are sharp. When I rip through the shoulder, it cut easily. Now, your sword is much lighter. It tapers before it gets to the bend, making the sword easy to swing one-handed. Overall, sir, your weapon, it will kill. Awesome. All right, gentlemen, time for the strength test. Now, to test the strength and overall construction of your blades, I will be taking them and smashing these pots. Now remember, this is not about how well your blades hold up through this punishment. Kevin, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. <laughs> Kevin, your handle, it's kind of fat, but your distance, your scale with your guard is great for me. As far as your blade goes, I mean, you've taken some pretty big hits and lost a lot of the tips of your serrations. Right. The blade is in one piece. It's still solid, nothing loosened up. Well done. Thank you. All right, Eric, ready to get ugly? <laughs> Tear it up. So Eric, right off, up here on your blade, you've taken some damage on these serrations. You lost a bit of those edge. It's still in one piece. You did a good job. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, Bladesbits. It's time to find out how sharp your blades are. This is the sharpest test, the jackfruit slice. To find out how sharp your weapons are, I'm going to take your weapon to cut the rope and release this jackfruit. Then I'm going to slice through it. Now, unlike the strength test, this is all about what the edge of your blade does to the jackfruit. Kevin, you're up first. You ready? Yes, sir. Let's do this. All right, Kevin, let's talk about your edge here. So the sweet spot that we have right here for this sword took a lot of damage during the strength test. So in the initial cut on the rope didn't cut. Now, on the second cut, we use a little bit other parts of the blade where it is sharp. It cut the rope and it cut the jackfruit. So overall, sir, your weapon, it will cut. Good. All right, Eric, your turn. So you ready? Let's do it. All right, Eric, so it's the same thing. The sweet spot on this blade took some dulling on the strength test, and it did affect cutting the rope on the first attempt. On the second attempt, cut that rope, and it also cut the jackfruit in half. Overall, sir, your weapon, you will cut. Excellent. Well, gentlemen, we gave you an extremely difficult blade to build in the Tega Sword, and you both performed exceptionally well in our test. But the judges have made the decision, and there can only be one champion. And the Fortune Fire champion today is... Eric, congratulations. Kevin, unfortunately, didn't make the cut, and Dave's gonna tell you why. Kevin, what this came down to was the heat treat in that blade, not getting it hard enough, and so many of those teeth just got pounded back into that blade. That's why we're letting you go. Oh, yeah. Well, Kevin, you did exceptionally well, but unfortunately, your time in the forge has ended. I'm gonna have to ask you to please step out. That was probably the most challenging thing that I've ever done. It had about half a dozen things that I'd never done before. I gave it my all, so I'm pleased with what I've brought to the table. And I'm ready to get back at it again. Eric, congratulations. You are today's Forge and Fire champion. Feeling pretty good? I'm feeling amazing. You definitely impressed us. Good job, man. Without further ado, there is a check for $10,000 waiting for you out that door. Go grab it. Thank you. I don't even know how it happened. Oh, man. That is 
It's a surreal feeling. It still hasn't even kicked in. I recently got engaged, so I will be putting the $10,000 towards my wedding and my honeymoon afterwards. Love you, baby.